people on mobile have different expectations for how content works, right? And that long form article might not always be the right choice. And that's why we're introducing AMP Stories. So if I'm a developer, I want to make an AMP Story, how do I do it? AMP Stories are an extension to AMP. So first, you'll import the AMP Story JavaScript and then just add an AMP Story tag to your page. AMP Story has a hierarchy where within an AMP Story tag, you'll create multiple AMP Story pages. Within each page, there are multiple layers that are stacked back to front and then shown on top of one another to create the desired visual design. You can have one layer in the back that just has a video that's playing just to be just sort of a background rich media asset to, to just make the visuals kind of pop. And then on top of that, you can have, for example, say text. So you might want to have like a, a quote that somebody said, or you want to have an animation running that adds to the visual effects. And you can sort of, again, mix and match and combine these things to create the visual layout of your story. So I'm curious, how, are, how is the format developed for stories? So for stories, basically, we uh, established this uh, partners engagement program. We worked with eight partners from the uh, news ecosystem uh, to develop together a format for visual storytelling on mobile. So stories began with Snapchat, and Facebook has stories now. Um, what's the use of stories in this case? Why do we need more stories out there? I think a, the goal here is really to have stories available in the open web ecosystem. So uh, not necessarily only available in closed platforms where you have to basically uh, sign in and to access the content. We want the content to be potentially available on any site, uh, discoverable on the open web. Anyone can then, in addition, embed the content in a, in a, in a platform like Facebook or Snapchat, but uh, the content is still sourced from the origin uh, publisher. So it's still from, uh, for example, CNN or Washington Post. So basically it maintains the key aspects of the open web. One key aspect of uh, AMP Stories is that they're just regular web pages that adhere to the AMP format. And so you just need to produce these stories, put them on your uh, site, and then uh, Google Search Engine will just discover them and surface them in the, uh, on search. Uh, at, at this time, the, because we are in a developer preview, you will only see the stories in this, the developer preview environment, which is the g.co AMP Stories link that we've been sharing. So if you reuse these stories, you will see them uh, going to g.go slash stories. WordPress is a large part of the web, and it's now easier than ever to use AMP with WordPress. Uh, this is Alberto Medina from Google. And Alberto, what are you working on over here? What, what is all this stuff? So we have been working on, on a vision to make uh, all AMP experiences in WordPress. So a world in which basically users can just have their site activate the plugin and have a full WordPress exp uh, AMP experience in WordPress. Uh, so we started collaborating with Automatic like mid last year, and we with the goal of advancing the plugin, the AMP plugin that they pioneered to adopt it at scale. And so Automatic did this plugin in the first place. Can you say more about the plugin's history and how it came to exist and your involvement with the project now? Yeah, so we, we care about the future of the web, you know, and we want to democratize publishing. That's, that's what we're here for. And so things like AMP that make uh, the web more accessible and, and improve performance for, for users, the user experience, is really important to us. So that's why we got involved with Google. Um, and with WordPress.com VIP, we look after some of the, the biggest enterprise WordPress applica applications on the web. Um, and our, our focus on those is, is performance and security. And AMP, uh, delivering AMP for, for people helps us to help our clients to deliver performant WordPress applications at scale. So what's possible in WordPress now? So until today, only some of the, or mainly the articles were converted to AMP uh, with the WordPress AMP plugin. And that was really through uh, the paired mode, which, um, which for the users, they had a completely different visual experience between the non-AMP version and the AMP version. That was mainly caused because uh, some of the WordPress components weren't AMP valid and with 0.7 all WordPress components are now AMP valid and that opened the doors uh, for native AMP in WordPress. In other words, now users can have only one version of the website which is uh, the native AMP version and, and native AMP experience. So th there's no longer a need for a paired mode and two versions. 
And uh, what's coming in the future for this project? We're at version 0.7. What's going to be in version 0.8 and beyond? Because WordPress allows you to do absolutely anything, AMP enforces certain best practices for how a WordPress uh, theme can be designed and, and the kinds of things that a WordPress theme can output. So with those that baseline of best practices in place, that opens the door for us to introduce things like uh, progressive web apps and to do the kind of offline caching experiences that really make uh, a website much more engaging. To close, I would like to say that the development of AMP in WordPress with the AMP plugin has come a long way since we have been working on this project with, together. Uh, the plugin is available today on GitHub, so please download it and test it and file issues and tell us what you need. Let's make AMP in WordPress awesome. <laughs>